Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. It's Ebro in the Morning. It's Laura Styles, and you have Rosenberg who said he wasn't feeling well, so we uh, recused him from the program. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we have biracial obsessed Kenya Barris on the program. <laughs> 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 so listen, I, I was offended when I saw everybody coming for you um, because me being biracial, I was like, "Yo, Kenya needs to have me a part of his PR." <laughs> but then I was like, "Nah, it wouldn't work because then he would just be more biracial obsessed." There's too much light skin stuff going on where you at. I think is the problem. Here's the crazy thing: <clears throat> it started with Blackish, right? Which was about my family, kids' mom is biracial. So, you know, I'm not super dark. So my kids, you know, I I'm I cast the kids to look like my kids. Right. Cast Tracy. You know, did well, then we did a spin-off with Yara, who was one of the kids. Yeah. Then we did a spin-off about Tracy's life being mixed. And it, and then I did my Black AF, which was again about my life, but doing it different with Rashida. It was like I'm obsessed. I'm like, but people forget it's intergalactic coming to America, Shaft. Um, soul food, the girlfriends, the game. Like I don't. I, I if you put well, they don't know you. They they forget those things, and they just put all of what you've done in that what you just told us those four programs, and now this new movie. If you put my, and I even like to say this, but if you put my resume, nobody. I'm blacker than Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody's done. I've never done anything that's not black. Are you offended by the assertion that you're no, biracial? You don't care. No, I, but the only time I got offended was when they came for my kids. Wait, who? I, I missed that whole thing. There was just a, a, a picture and somebody started petting up like, these aren't real black kids. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah nah, and I'm like, I'm right. like, no, nah, my kids go to school with mostly a lot of white kids. And they are flies and buttermilk and come home and be like, mommy, what's nappy? You know what I'm saying? I don't want, so they did. I, they I want have my, a real, a real black experience in America. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. I don't want my hair like this. Can I straighten my hair? Can mm. we do this? So I'm like, yo, that was the only time I've ever spoke about it because, to the most part, I'm so lucky. You know what I'm saying? I'm so blessed, and so like I think to have a, you know, you get the jokes, and some of them I told you, you know, say biracial in the mirror three times. Kenya Barris appears. <laughs> I, Drake's baby looks like Kenya Barris producer. Like some of them, I'm writing through back, like well played, a good joke. Yeah. But I feel like I, I'll take the jokes. But I, I, I did, it did hit me with my kids. The internet definitely goes too far. They, yeah. you know what I mean. They take jokes and like people get really outraged about things and go after people's personal lives, which is way old. We see it all the time. Yeah, it happens frequently. Yeah, and I feel like it's. I think that you should have to register for the internet. I think that people people get real brave when you're anonymous. You know what? Uh, I felt something. the same. I feel like submit that ID. Yeah, seriously. Be yeah, who no, you no, are. No Be fake photos. No. Link, no, link to your driver's license number or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, we don't got to go that far, but at least be able to identify <laughs> that person. Show your face, you egg. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I feel like it's real easy to be bold, yes. throw rocks when nobody knows you through the rock. You know what I'm saying? But like, now nah, people are keyboard thugs all day. They are. They're not They're ready so for prime digitally time. brave. And by the way, most of the things that you you've heard about your new movie, you people, or your resume, nobody's gonna say to your face. No. And then you know, I I literally we just had the premiere, and I think it played pretty good. You know what I'm saying? And people seem to really really like it. But it was all the shit they were talking about before. None of that's in the movie, you know what I'm right? Saying? And that's not what it's about. You know what I'm saying? It's actually. But I think people, but this will compel some people to go watch it because Maybe. they'll be looking to see if you're biracial obsessed, right. and may get hit with a real good film about something. Right. And I'm from LA, so like, let me be very clear. I've dated the spectrum, but like, I'm from LA. Like, you know, if you saw growing up, everybody has their thing. Like, if I saw, you know, what I'm saying, I'm like. I get how that works. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's not unattractive. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just like like Kelly Rowland's the most beautiful woman ever. You know what I'm saying? Right. Janelle Monet ever. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, but I feel like it, you can't, it, it's this whole, I don't know if it's woke, because that seems like such a corny word, but it's like this whole. Nah, it's triggering. We live in a, we live in a society that has, is built on, um, and we talked about it many times this week, you know, with the, the M, I don't know if you saw the MLK statue that didn't have Martin and Coretta's faces on, everybody was up in arms, including myself, um, because it was like, yo, I want to see two black, the expression of black love, I want to see their faces. Yeah. It's art, the person was putting out a thing, it's still a beautiful monument, whatever, but as someone who grew up in the United States that has not only learned about, but seen the erasure of black features, 
you know, people not wanting to celebrate darker complexions. Yeah. It's that. That's yeah. what it is. It's yeah. not a present day, you know, uh, new phenomena. It's the it's the reality of a country that instead of putting black folks in film, they painted white people's faces. I, I agree, but I you also think that there's a conspiracy. Not only, but I think there's like uh, something. Anytime you can split us, you win. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying the civil rights movement. The crazy thing about it that was Angela Davis, Huey P. Newton. You know what I'm Mixed kids, you yep. know what I'm saying? Because they were like, yeah, we just need numbers. You know what I'm saying? We're all black. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I feel like if they can find a way to, you know, it's that old, like, it's not a true tale. The Willie Lynch thing wasn't quite true. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, separate the lights from the darks, the field from the house. Divide and conquer has been, conquer. been a war tactic. 100%. And yeah. I feel like if you can find something to tear us apart, then we're less strong. That's right. You know what I'm saying? When I felt like the idea of and I'll even go as far as say brown too. Like they don't, black and brown people grew up in the same neighborhoods. LA, New York, we still grew up in all. So if they can find a way to separate that, they're saying they're trying to com completely make us smaller groups because then they're stronger. There's less powers. There's exactly. not a power base when everybody's fragmented like that. Exactly. Um, this, this film, You People, mm -hmm. um, Eddie Murphy, mm -hmm. Nia Long. Keep going. Uh, Jonah keep, Hill. Jonah Hill. Um, who else? Lauren there? London. Lauren London. That was the name I was looking for. Yes. Julia Louis Dreyfus, da um, David Duchovny. Phenomenal cast. Mike I mean, Epps, Dion Cole. And, and <coughs> now you're the you're the producer, the writer. What role do you play? Both, all the above. It's mo producer, writer, director. This okay. is the first time that I directed a movie. I've done TV and other stuff, but this is the first time I directed a movie. Is that why wow. you're a little? I noticed when you spoke about the screening, uh -huh. you were like, I think they, I think they. Is that I was where you're so, a little apprehensive? And, I was and, so nervous. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was so, it was 1,200 some people, whatever. And all I heard was, mm, like, I couldn't hear people laughing. You know what I'm saying? Right. I just was like sitting there, just like, you know, it's the first time I'd seen it. Like, scared like, a little bit. Scared. And then after people, you know, they came on there like, this is the best screening we've had and for pre you know, premiere we had and this and that. So I was really happy and I hope that that's, that's real. I really just, it made me feel like I, I love Netflix that they allowed me to do this movie and they, wrote a, a real check for it and really got, you know, got it. And I hope it does well on Netflix. I really, it made me, seeing it in the theater, I want to do, I want to do more theater. I want to do box office stuff. This is where you had it down. I, I feel like if I'm going to do movies, I want to do box office stuff because that is context. That's like this movie made X amount of money. Like Ryan Coogler is one of my heroes, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. he took Black Panther and they, they wanted him to put, Thor or Iron Man or, or Captain America and he was like no nah, because if that happens you'll say it was a Thor or Captain America or, or Iron Man movie he was like I want this movie with these people and I want to you know I'm saying I want to see it work and it worked in right. a crazy way it opened up in Saudi Arabia over the places and I feel like him sticking to those guns and really making money changed they say we can't they were telling us we couldn't cross over yep you know what I'm saying he changed all that mm. How uh how did you go about getting Eddie for this movie? Was that a you thing? How, how did that play out? Um, so Warren Zavala is his agent. And I think he's like one of the saviors of the, this movie, but he really liked the movie for Eddie, and Eddie responded to the script, and uh, which was crazy for me because like making Eddie Murphy laugh is like scoring on Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was no getting Eddie was crazy. We already had Jonah. Uh, um, and Jonah wrote with you, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, we already had Jonah. Um, we knew what we wanted to do. Eddie was our goat. That's what we, you know, wanted. Uh, um, it, there was a Denzel small conversation because it was like having Malcolm X sitting across from the same right, 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 right. <laughs> oh. right. Um, but we, you know, we wanted Eddie. We thought Eddie, Eddie doesn't do do anything. That's right. right. Eddie's not going to. So, um, but he read it. Took a meeting and we were like, "Oh shit, Eddie's gonna do it. Let's go after wow. Julia." Like we wanted, like we wanted Julia to drive. Cause we were like, "Julia's never gonna do this." Like Julia's on the Mount Rushmore comedy. Then we got Julia. Then we wanted, like, we, you know, and it was Lauren was the big thing because they were all cast. We <clears throat> we <clears throat> we wanted to make sure that, like, if I saw if I saw TMZ and it was like, I don't know, like. uh Zoe Saldana <clears throat> dating um, uh, Jonah Hill. I'd be like, oh, okay. But if I saw on TMZ 
Jonah Hill or David Lauren. I'm like, what the fuck? What's going you know what on? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, this so that was what the movie had to be about. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, two people who wouldn't normally get together. And Lauren also is my, that's my sister, that's my friend. Like, she doesn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? She's on her path. You know what I'm saying? And really, it's about intentionality and, like, what it's about. And she read it, and we, like, started begging her. We took her to lunch, and after we took her to lunch, we were like, these two. So did- Lauren London was harder to get than Eddie Murphy is what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> no, she was. That's wild. She was because she doesn't, you know, she's been on her journey. She, you know, had a tragic yeah. you know, right, same right, thing right. happen, and she's in a, <clears throat> very intentional now about, like, you know, protective of her children, protective of her uh, time, her image. She's like, I'm coming out and doing something where I'm romantic with someone. With the way you know, saying it was hard for her, but she, she trusted me. We were friends, like, and she ended up being more my rock than I was hers. Now, it, it, uh, here's a, here again, you're pointing out some. You had a little apprehension, insecurity going into making this movie, right? Mm-hmm. Is it once again because it's a movie? Mm-hmm. Is it was was the biggest thing for you, right? If it was TV, it would be a much easier lift for you. Oh, but <clears throat> TV is a way easier lift. TV is way more lucrative. TV is way, way easier to live. And TV actually has a, you know, the time you write, I've written a script and gotten it produced and edited and on air in two and a half weeks before. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a three, three, three year, three and a half year process. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So movies are a, a different, you know, beast. Now, without giving the whole movie away, can you tell us why you titled it You People? That actually, to be fair, Netflix, um, we had, I wanted to do For the Culture, Fuck the culture, culture, you know, saying like that. And and Netflix, you know, they tested, but they came out with some names. And you people, I was like, I'm not doing that. And then I went to bed, and I remember my dad used to be like, you people, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, it had all these double meetings, and it actually worked, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, white people will be like, you people, black people will be like, you, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I felt like it kind of, it landed in a way that I felt like it was what the movie is. And and do you think, Kenya, that with this film, is obviously it's sort of a specific interracial dating experience but do you think that anybody who just has to deal with that uh meshing of families regardless of what those cultures are will sort of relate to this film yes and i don't say stuff like absolute but i feel like yes i think that was the whole thing it was like if you if you're christian and someone else is this you know i'm saying if you're black and someone else is this if you're anytime you have to sort of like bring families together and they're not just like simpatico. Like I feel like that's what this. Well, because everybody thinks their their cultural group is so different. Yeah. When like you know I'm biracial. My mother's Jewish. So being a, growing up and going to the Hebrew school and having an Ethiopian Hebrew teacher who was you know dark complected, but then you know in an environment where most of the kids were white, and then you would hear Jewish people say, you know, our Jewish people are, you know, so loud. And then you hear black people say, oh, black people are so loud. And you hear, like, Italians be like, oh, no, Italians are loud. I'd be like, well, everybody's saying they're loud. <laughs> and so clearly we got something in common here. You know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, and it's Jewish just, moms and black moms have a lot in common. I, my mom used to say the same thing. They, they both, you know, suffocate their sons. You know what I'm saying? Want their son. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't talk. They both love gold and Cadillacs, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but I feel like there's there's more commonalities than differences often in often. us when we don't when we if we actually look a little right. bit deeper. Right. So I feel like if you're Jewish and black, you really it's, this is gonna I think it's gonna You think it's a home run. I think you you personally will see some shit in it, especially if you went to Hebrew school. Yeah, nah, I, you know, but I don't, well, yeah, because so you play with Jonah Hill's. Uh, so he's not just Ju- white; he's, he's Jewish. Jewish. No, he's very. It's 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 the oppression Olympics. It's like who had it worse? <laughs> 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 oh, 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 yes, Jews or blacks? Like that's the that's the movie, you know? and, it and that's be so more, timely. Well, I was gonna say it couldn't be more timely with the whole not with everything have, going on, Kyrie, Kanye, lo- all this. It's the it's the exact conversations. And so this was my, you, but by the way, this was my upbringing was the, you know, my father being, you know, uh, an activist, my mother being an activist. I'm from Northern California originally. Oh, okay. Um, but then I have, you know, cousins who are in the Nation of Islam. I have cousins who were, you know, Hebrew Israelites. And then you have my mom whose father immigrated from Eastern Europe during the world, during World War. My my mother's family didn't rock with me at all. Like, I don't really know them because I was, because she had a child with a black man. So yeah, I don't yeah. even know them. I was raised completely by my black 
family. So that was my whole growing up experience, other than the fact that I have a white mom and a brother who we have different dads. So my brother's white. Jeez. Like super white. So a white. <laughs> a white dude. And then yeah. I have nieces and nephews who are straight white in Minnesota. And then yeah. I have nieces and nephews. You know what I mean? So that was what you're talking about with this whole like oppression Olympics and people trying to compete for whose experience was the most unique, et cetera, et cetera. I, that was my whole life. My entire upbringing. And even to this day, because now I work with Rosenberg, and I had to call him out yesterday for telling me how to feel about a Martin Luther King Jr. statue. And was like, yo, white man, don't be telling me how to feel about it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, and Kenya, did you, you have to be one of those people who was like in the midst of the Cole Kanye conversation yes. in a really interesting spot. Because like your whole life, I'm no, guessing, that, I, that it's shit, black and Jewish everywhere. Bro, I'm going to tell you right now, that shit almost drove me crazy. To, Why? Because it was, Netflix is going to be mad, but fuck it. I feel like I love them, but it was so many, uh, so there's, can I say, yeah, so, so Niggas in Paris is a big part of the movie, written into the script. Mm -hmm. And people were like, we had trailers that had it in it, people wanted mm -hmm. to pull the song from the movie, and I was like, no. And I was like, I'm really separate. I was like, I'm not going to be, I was like, if you want to pull it, take off, you know, genius. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I'm not, you're not going to start that conversation with me. Like being the black man at first, the art versus artist thing. Right. Then this nigga went on this show and started saying Hitler made mics. <laughs> and I no, was like, bro, no, what are no. you doing? Like, I can't even fucking like, I can't saying like he, it, it kept getting worse. Right? <laughs> right. And I was like. But at the same time, I do feel like I just was saying this shit like uh, Neil Diamond did Sweet Caroline for Caroline Kennedy, who was seven years old, who he had never met. And I like, I'm like, they still sing that song at, at arenas, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and this person did this and this person. Did. So I'm like, you know, I don't I don't know how I feel about erasing Kanye's legacy musically. You know what right. I'm saying? I feel like. There's a, there's a separation of art versus artist, right? And I feel like the idea that if we're going to fucking do that, close the museums. Because they were fucking built by a lot of ugly people who didn't make beautiful things. And then the Kyrie shit came up. And I, I called <clears throat> CA. And I called, like, they were really receptive. I was trying to talk to Adam. So I was like, yo, you're making this. This is a Kunta Kinte, Kunta Kinte moment. Yeah. I'm like, you're trying to say Toby Kunta Kinte. You're trying to make him call himself Toby. I had... Kyrie, I, I don't think Kyrie even watched that video. If I'm being honest, you know what I'm saying? I think one of his uncles sent that shit to him and he was just like, yeah, this is dope. People need to see this. And then he was like, oh, shit. And I think he quickly was like, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? And I want to, you know, can I do this? But at the same time, I think he's, he was exploring himself and trying I think, to find I think, himself. I think he, I th if I recall correctly, he said he read the book and he watched the film. He didn't. <laughs> But, I, but but what my I interpretation mean, of it was, I don't think people quite understand anti-Semitism I, I and agree. the nuances of what, because anti-Semitism isn't quite the same as blatant racism. I, I agree. Right? It's not based on straight up your appearance. Yes. Right? Anti-Semitism, there's so many different layers to it. We talk about it a lot on this program and we don't. People stop paying attention in, in, in ninth, 10th grade, a lot of these people who are out here talking. Right. They didn't actually delve deep into understanding anti-Semitism as we know it today in the mm. United States through the U.S. lens and the, and the World War II lens. They don't, I don't think they understand it. And, and so African-American culture, right, for the most part, I'm not talking about Nation of Islam. I'm not talking about Farrakhan. African-Americans, right? For the most part, could not have been <clears throat> less anti-Semitic. You know what I'm saying? Because the civil rights movement wouldn't have happened. Martin Luther King was backed by, you know, a huge Jewish conglomerate. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you saw the marches, it would be liberal Jews next to us. It wouldn't have happened. And so you took these two people who for the most part in this country, whether they knew all the facts or not, really sort of moved a lot and progressed a lot of things. And all of a sudden, I feel like right before midterms, all of a sudden, you start seeing something once again that that separates us. Well, and but it's also too, and here's the other nuance that that's not talked about enough. It's not about being Jew. The racism that exists is not because a group is Jewish or their religion. It's power base. It's because they're white. Yes. The same way, right wing Christians 
Those were Christians burning crosses mm -hmm. for the KKK. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because they were Christians. It was because they were white. Yeah. Just like you have racism in Islam and complexionism and in every faith. And so that's people started talking as if it was an entire group. Yeah. Right. That was on the same exact page. That's where you get into anti-Semitism. I agree. And I and was in the, I was in the barber shops because <clears throat> at the time my barber was on a movie. So I started yeah. going back to the barber shop and it was the greatest time to go to the barber shop because you see the movie. I was like, yo, I call my wife friends. I was like, yo, I'm going to need to stop. I was like, the barber shop is starting to feel away. And that's the <laughs> way you start really knowing what's going on. I'm like, you got them turning. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the Kyrie thing more than the Kanye thing had people being like, I don't know if this is cool. Like, I feel like you're punking him. And I was like, there needs to be, like, we need to have a conversation. Rosenberg felt the same way about the uh, ADL and the list of demands and, and and Nike coming out at the wrong time. Like, Rosenberg, you was on the same page. Yeah, no, it, it was, it was the timing was just really it was bad. Too much, and yeah. the and it was too much. Like, listen, Kyrie is is a stubborn dude. If you it, we obviously being here, we cover him Flat a lot. Flat Earther, yeah, yeah. He's gonna stay with what but he's, he's also, gonna stay with. He's also indignant and waffles between, yo, I'm just a regular human, <laughs> but, but at the same time, I know my power and my influence right. to my community. So you're not just a regular everyday nah, so person. He, so you know he, what I'm saying? so he didn't do himself any favors. But when that whole list came out, and then Nike. Who honestly, what I've heard is Nike wanted to drop him well before this, that and they used true. it as an opportunity, right. and that was that was not a cool move, man. It was because there was already so much division. It was tonnage, and it started feeling like we're getting punked. It started feeling like you know what I'm saying, like say whatever with Kanye. You know what I'm saying, like you can't take kick him out. Adidas has ever, even though you know they were started by two Nazi brothers, whatever. They have a chance to sort of turn their career, their their company around, and people whatever. But you can't take, kick him out. He talked too much shit. I get it. You know what I'm saying? He deserved, he was like, I can say whatever I want. That's, that's fair, you know. But you can't then still sell his shoes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just take his name off and still sell his shoes. That's not cool. No, it ain't yeah. even about being cool. At that point, it's just about like, yo, we're going to do what the fuck we want. Yeah, and I feel like, so there was, there were things that were going on that I'm like, both sides in here. That's what I think the movie really does well, is it's like basically saying, we need to come together more, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, marginalized communities because Jewish culture is not financially, but in terms of their, you know, around the world, the hatred goes around, they're, they're marginalized in some yeah. aspects. Black, brown, Jew, like we need to come together because we're so much more powerful. You know what I'm saying, especially when you look in like a dude, you know, like Trump could get back in office like that. You know what I'm saying? If you can bring these two cultures, black people put, Biden, Barack in office, you know what I'm saying? Like with the power of, of the Jewish media, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, media controlled in some aspects by certain pe you know, people with, of the Jewish culture. They got together and they put that, in, that campaign, those campaigns out. We're so much power. I think in general, we're so much more powerful together. And that doesn't mean against white people. That just means <clears throat> the world is better when you can kind of live in a place of love. I know that sounds corny, you know what I'm saying? But when you live, can live in a place of love, I feel like it is, <clears throat> it's better. You know, I was just looking, listening to Savage in the clubhouse thing, you know what I'm saying? And he's catching plaque, you know what I'm saying? Arguing with somebody talking about how many people, you know, his crew put out. And I feel like <clears throat> we're so, we become desensitized to murder, to like the shit we do to ourselves, to the thing, to what, you know, to stuff, to wanting stuff. I feel like we really need to have like, we don't really have any leaders. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we really don't, if we don't have leaders, we don't have other leaders to talk to. And I really feel like we Well, need I think the problem is as a society that is um, uh, just infatuated with celebrity, we have leaders. There are very smart people having the conversations we are having right now that the average everyday person doesn't sort to or listen to because they're not a celebrity. That's exactly right. So, so then subsequently, they weren't. They're not a leader. They're not a leader. Martin Luther King was a celebrity. That's right. Malcolm X was a celebrity. That's you know right. What I'm saying like even Jesse Jackson. You know what I'm saying like they. You know, there are people having these conversations, but I feel like we don't have people that we look to. We look to rappers. We look to. And that's the. But that's a. That's a mistake. 
I agree. <laughs> That's a mistake to to expect somebody who makes art and that leaves things open for interpretation and or is just sharing their lens or their story and doesn't have a full macro view of things, allowing those individuals to be leadership on topics that they're not familiar with. I, I right? Because there's, spe- there's people who specialize and have studied these uh, sociology and, and, and so- societal topics for their entire life. We don't make them celebrities. We don't sort to them. I agree. And we don't have conversations within our... So white people say nigga, right? It's, that's, that's out, right? But it's at the same time, we have commercially super viable populist music that has... We drop a million M-bombs, right? Mm-hmm. So that's like saying... Tell, and so we're going to tell white kids, we, we want, to, want them to buy the music. You can say all these words except this. That's right. Right? That's like me putting on a book and being like, this community can't read page 56, can't pay, read page. And that's not how it goes. If we're going to be, if we're either going to, we can't have it both ways. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, we're either saying. No, we can't. I disagree. <clears throat> you think we so Absolutely. I, Every, there's, there's groups, there's groups that have their lines. Every Ex- group has that. their lines, Ex- for, uh, especially for, for, when it comes for, for art. Explain how that works for Espe- art. Well, it, I don't know how. I mean, there's just things that you Art's just can't do. Though. Isn't art for? Is it art a populist co- uh, uh, event? Yeah, don't but there's the but there's people? certain people who get to participate in certain art cultures, and other people who don't. Not everybody is allowed into certain spaces. But when you were talking about Jay's, my favorite rapper ever, okay. right? When him and Kanye do niggas in Paris, mm-hmm. and they do it 15, 17, 20, you know, 30 just, times at thir- a show. Thir- 30 mm-hmm. times. Right. And you know a good amount of those characters, those, those, the audience members, mm-hmm. are not black. That's right. What are you saying? You want to say... What, what, what you're saying, watch your mouth on, in these parts. <laughs> but that's that's that's. But nobody's false. policing that. No, that's, There's nobody actually policing that. And you, and, and you know what I'm saying? And I think it's... It's complicated because yes, as 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 a marginalized group in a land where you know you were uh, uh, ostracized and basically tried, they tried to erase you. Yes, you created something that everyone celebrates and loves. Popular, right? And and then we say, yo, but you can't have this and you can't have that and don't cross these lines. Otherwise, we'll be def- offended. Right. I don't have. I personally don't have a problem with that, right. especially if the group that we're saying not to do it is the one that committed the is a part of the benefit of of the the separation so, and the Jim Crow uh, and the and the racism in the first place. I, I don't. Have I, I a don't. With I that. don't disagree. Like my <clears throat> some of my you know best friends are white, and that's one of the things when me and Jonah write in the movie, we were like talking about the yeah the the, the, the Watch the Throne concert, and he mm-hmm. was like lock in on somebody white at the concert, and just make sure they see your eyes. And watch them do the dropout. Watch when they, uh, yeah. they see you watch I do, it. I do it all the time. I do it on videos. I do it all the time. I watch and see whether or not they do it. They do the dropout. And the yeah. dropout was funny. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, but what you, I know when they're not, when I'm not watching them, they're not doing the dropout. Of course they're not. And so I'm like. Well, actually not. I did the dropout. Not, not I always do the I was just about to say, of course. there. I know there's hey, bro, definitely You don't people. do the dropout. Who, Rosenberg? Rosenberg. When, when, I mean, when you're, in, when you're in your house by yourself taking... The first time you heard uh, Niggas in Paris, you by yourself, you're fucking, the album has come out, it's crazy. You, you on your own, without knowing, did the dropout. No, you didn't. I swear to you. I, sw- I swear to you. I've been doing the dropout the whole life. No. I swear to you. you, it, might, I, well, you're you not, once you, you're not comfortable staying it, it's not hard. It's like, I feel so uncomfortable. But the we first have famous- time you heard it, the first mm-hmm. time you heard it, you didn't know when it was coming. And but then, how can I sing it? But then you learn in the song. You learn the song. The first time you heard it, you didn't know it was coming. Then you like it. Then you hear it by the third time. At what point do you say, I'm dropping out? <laughs> From the very beginning. I never Fuck jump in. Fuck I God. swear God. to you. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. Yo, listen, see, can you, know, you know what's interesting about this, I, my, Rosenberg? I'm going to tell you what's interesting about this. There's a lot of people who dislike Rosenberg just because he's white, right? And, and Or they like, dislike him because he's Jewish and white. Uh-huh. Or they dislike him because he's white, Jewish, and he's on a hip-hop radio station. And I think a lot of them think like you think. Like he's not the person he portrays and says that he just, he absolutely has I never think, used it. I think it there's or, a line. Mm-hmm. My best friend is Jewish, right? Mm-hmm. Like my, my brother, like he helped me with this. Did I say his name is Hell Rothstein. And he does the dropout, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I, we'll talk because we've gotten through all that shit, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, no, not all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, the idea when we're writing. Yeah, but just because you know one Jew don't mean you yeah, know come on, other Jew. Let me, let me be very, I'm not saying the Rosenberg <laughs> dude. I'm saying as a writer in Hollywood, yeah. 
ninety percent of the people I write with, and I've gotten to be really like brothers with them. Once you get through the bullshit, right? Once you stop talking about bullshit, you want people who you can be real with. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, 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 I'm Roseburg as a as a researcher, witness to hip hop and culture, has a respect like M, right? You know what I'm saying? Has a respect and won't won't do it. But there is a point where it's just like, um. I feel like it, you're not supposed to say certain things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But see, but this back to the people not saying certain things, right? Um, let's just take women, for example. Yes. Women call each other bitches, ah ho, bitch, uh, playfully. Yes. You can't play like that. But I, but I say it. Yeah, but you don't play with them that way. Is my point. You know that I've there's got, a line. I'll get caught on it. I will mess mess up once in a while. In the same way, a white person using the N word might get punched in the face. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Right. I'm just saying that there is a possibility that you could offend someone or get hurt by one, playing one with certain percent. groups. That's all I'm saying. One million and, percent. And to act as if we should take those boundaries down because I don't want to take them down. Oh, I, I, I want to make it sure because I oh, want no, no, I no, want no, people. No, 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 no. I think it's okay for white people to be uncomfortable in certain scenarios. The same way I any agree. other group walks around America and there's just certain times where you're like, yo, Man. I ain't supposed to be here. This ain't for me. I'm not supposed to be saying this. Can I tell I'm you what my, what my solution to it is? Mm. You know how they have clean versions? I think we need to have white versions. White versions. You know what I'm saying? Show. Where you don't have... Because if we're going to really nah, do it... Nah, man. No. Yes. yes. White people no, have white to version. learn, just like any other group, that you just don't get to do everything, so, bro. That's so it. But you, I think the N-word is different. Hold you on, have to give... No, it ain't. But if you read... A, if the N-word deserves its power, though. No, it... You said it's what? its own thing. It is, and it deserves to be its own thing. It is that powerful word. It's not bitch. It's not hoe. The N word has a deeper meaning, and I think it is to Ebro's point. It's cool for white people to learn that lesson. Now, you could argue, Kenya, maybe it would be ideal if people didn't make it every other word in the song. Or, or, or people I think could we do could the whole, or sorry, Rosenberg, people could do the whole, you know, if we're trying to iron things out and make things better, we shouldn't have all these boundaries. Man, fuck all that. It's up to white people to fix the shit that they broke. It ain't up to black people to figure out the fucking agree. solutions. It's up to white so people to stop asking black people how they can be less fucking hateful or people who look like... Man, stop asking... Asking the oppressed and the injured and the victims how to I fix agree. shit you fucking did, man. I, I agree. I think, but like, so like, I'm listening to Trinidad Jones, right? James. 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 Yeah. You know what I'm and then it's, it has a run. You know what I'm saying? It's the best run in the song. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if I'm, if I'm watching my, my white friend, he's just going to drop out for 30 that seconds. That one's a tough one. Why you got... <laughs> like, yeah. That's yes. The best. You, just, yeah. you just wouldn't even play the song, frankly. Just don't play this. Just don't listen to It's not for you. You, know you can play the song, just know when you ain't supposed but to be doing But that's the best shit. run in the, in the house. Listen, your white privilege needs to be put on the back burner every now and then, especially when it comes to black shit. Ain't so, nothing wrong with that, man. So, so my whole thing is, like, you know how we have, if we're going to censor stuff, you know what I'm saying, we need to, my, my thought is, I don't want to have a feeling that I'm going to question Rosenberg and be like, no, you didn't, right? I feel like, just get the white version. You know what I'm saying? Support. But it already exists. It's a clean version. That's what they call it. Does the clean version still yeah, say they take, No, they take they the take N-word. Take the word clean, out. First of all, and let's be, let's be super clear. Yeah. And I tell white people this all the time. Black people ain't walking around around their grandmothers, mothers, elders, just using the N-word. No. It's not happening. You're getting your fucking teeth knocked out right. by somebody. It's a curse word. Right? So the assumption that you listen to a rap song, which is... Street material, if we're being honest. Most rap rap comes from the streets. I grew up in it, a, a nigga household, though. Not me. I grew up in a nigga household. Well, grandma and everybody used it. My grandmother didn't use it. You know what I'm saying? Because she came in a different... My great-grandmother... Great but my dad was a, a connoisseur. You know what I'm saying? Like, he <laughs> understood how to drop it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I grew up in a nigga household. And nobody household. was checking him on it. Hell no. You better not check. Like, that was... that. that for me, nigga was our... You know, I think Russell talked about this. As well. It was our call. But you knew it was a curse word. You knew it was a bad word when you were using it, though. No, you were it, using to me, it, it was a word of, of 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 familiarity and of tribe. You know what I'm saying? That I could say it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, we, as black people, one thing that we've done, that went away, other people don't, we take... The chitlins, we take the the, yeah, the yeah, wild yeah, green. We know. take the word motherfucker. We, you cross sitting in the my back. motherfucker, and it's like, yo, that's my motherfucker right there. Coretta like, Scott yeah. King was like, I'm not sitting in the back of the bus, right? 
Now the back you of the bus. Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. Now the back of the bus is the spot to sit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not in the back of the bus, you're not, it's not lit. That's the cool spot. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like we take, and I think that's our contribution to this country. Mean, but that we doesn't... take the worst and we turn it into best, and that, that's what we get to do. Right, but there's times where the things that we say are culture, and I'm not specifically talking about the N-word, I'm yeah. just talking about culture in general. Yeah. There are times, right, and that's one thing that Kendrick was talking about on this new album, Yeah. right? There's certain things that we call culture that are toxic and dysfunctional. I completely agree. Right? And so being able to say, listen, I know this is our thing and we do it and it, it, it's there's familiarity in it and there's love in it and there's all these things, it's still okay to understand and acknowledge that the chitlins, really, are we supposed to be eating that? Or was that just what our option was? I, I, I'm not, I don't fuck with chitlins, right? But I feel like I also wasn't in slavery. No, 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 I'm, no, 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 for sure. You take but, the but best. But you know what you, it was. You made the best for what you were, had. Greens grew wild and plentiful. Yes. They were, you know what I'm saying? And if you knew how to season yes. them, you know what I'm saying? A lot of that stuff still, it, yes. DNA wise, is traces why we have high, higher cholesterol, higher this, higher that, because we had to season them. How you know thing, but we figured out how to do yes, stuff. I get and all then, that, but and that then it gets mean... turned against us. Yeah, but once we ah. once they they turn it against us, they're like chillins are nasty shit. Like it wasn't nasty when you didn't have shit else. You know what I'm saying? We That's we fact. take the we take the the shit that that other people don't. We take the shit that other people don't fuck with. And then we decide how to make it good. And then once we make it good, That's fact. now you turn it against but us. But that but everything, but some of those things, right, that we made the most with, yep. in my opinion. And I believe some of those things we need to review because I, I, do, I totally agree. Because that doesn't mean that they're good We've for evolved. us. To, we, that's all I'm saying. I, and I, that's where I will say, nigga and popular music needs to me. It, it needs to evolve. I'm but, okay with. And, I, and, and I, don't I, disagree. I feel like bitch is almost more toxic than nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like because if a black person says nigga to me, I don't feel anything. You know what I'm saying? If we say it. Even if somebody, you know, Afro Latina says, you know, what I'm saying, like, I feel like a I bitch is a line. You call a, a, a black man a bitch. You saying, or you call a, a black woman, woman a bitch. You know I'm saying, saying, I feel something. like it's a super. There's no, you can get some some humor out of it, but there's no love in that. You know, what I'm saying, I feel, like, I feel like we can try to make it what it is, but it's really not. Like I think, like I think there's a lot of shit that we need to have like a review of. You know, what mm -hmm. I'm saying, and I think that we need to have more conversations, more films. I think that's one of the things I really was happy that we got to do this movie. We need to have more conversations, more films, more books, more things that actually talk about, like, let's stop keeping this stuff behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Let's actually have, let me fuck with Rosenberg and be like, I'll, let, me, let me put a, a camera in his house that he doesn't know. Right, let's do it. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Let me fuck with well, him. Well, Rosenberg, I mean, yesterday on Google, what happened, bro? What do you mean? On Google? Remember yesterday we had to Google something. Oh, and that I, is true. And I asked you to Google something. That he, is true. And I admitted he, it right away. I said I did type it in a Google search and look for a <laughs> quote from a movie. I was like, now you can't say you never used the N word. You no, know. and I admit it. And I admitted it when I, I did it when I auditioned for the um, for Atlanta all those years ago. But it was hard for me. And Shawnee had Yo, to stand outside with me. That was a whole episode on our show. Was that they wanted him to play a white guy in Atlanta, in the show Atlanta, <laughs> as DJ that used the N-word, and he was like, I don't know if I can take this part. <laughs> Listen, he's been waiting and wanting this audition, and Atlanta is, like, on fire, and he's like, finally my moment, and then it comes to this. Did you, and did then, you, and did then, you do and it? And then, so I, I, I did it. Shawnee, you remember? Shawnee and I stood out on the side of the building. I said, I'm not going to practice this with white people. That just feels wrong. I'm going to practice this with you Let, look, if, if you're cool with it. So, Shawnee, we, we, we sat there. I tried. I did the little audition, and then I saw uh, Donald and, and Fam later, and they were like, we just didn't believe you. We just yeah. didn't believe you. It didn't, it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. But that, it's crazy because I, I, I write with, a, you know, some like white writers, and sometimes they'll have to take scripts off. Cause it's their episode, and I'm like, do you, I'm like, that's all. You just seem like you dropped the the nigga pretty cool in this. Like you, you've used it before. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you familiar have a, with this. Do you have a fucking fast key on your keyboard? I was like, <laughs> a fast key. And so I felt they were like, well, it's different because I'm like, no, I was like, no, you fucking study how we say it. You you know how you've been waiting for the moment where you could do it and, and blame it on this. And I feel like that's that to me is. There's an artistry to that. There's something that, that that's being done in a, in a way that I feel like, I don't know. I think that we need to have real conversations. I think we need to really get back to having real conversations. I think, and 
There's nothing less with, safe. With as many podcasts as there are out here and as many, much content that's going on every fucking day, there's a lot of goddamn conversations. The problem is, going back to what we said earlier, the people having the conversations aren't experts on the topic. They're researchers, they're not witnesses. They're just right. entertainers. Yes. They're making compelling convo for the sake of sharing, not learning. Yes. Right. For the sake of captivating individual and, and, and individuals and, and plucking emotional cords to get, you know, uh, uh, to go viral. Because if you really want to get into a conversation, right, and learning, people ain't really trying to learn. Ta-Nehisi Coates got asked at a at a, a panel he was doing about saying nigga, and That's it okay. is the best. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the best, best, best version. Of why people can't say nigga. And I feel like anybody listening to this, please go research it because I don't want to tell it wrong. But he talked about basically how his dad, I don't know, like they cut it. His dad growing up was called Little Man or some shit like that, right? And he was like, he went there and he was like, oh, let's call my dad Little Man. He was like, if I call my dad that, I get my, you know what I'm saying? Like he was like, there's certain, you know what I'm saying, familial things that you can sort of get off. You know what I'm saying? He was like, but you can't, even though that's my dad, I can't get it off. He just, it was, just, it's beautiful. But I feel like, to your point, you need more people who are researchers, witnesses, you know what I'm saying, people who have can have conversations, but have them on a big level. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the the notion that we want to get into, like, who snitched on who, who did this, who did, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that shit is important for 30 seconds. And, 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 and it's working, uh, unfortunately, uh, the algorithm, we'll call it, the, 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 the simulation that we live in right now. Yeah. Right. It's working perfectly <laughs> because back to your original point of separation and, and divisiveness. Right. Yeah. Um, most of the conversations that are going far, like you brought up a 21 Savage thing from Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Right. That's going far, which is a bunch of individuals arguing about who shot the most people. Yeah. Right. Not about the many times that 21 Savage has gotten on Clubhouse and tried to solve problems yeah. or the fact that he, you know, loves R&B music and love songs and these other things, right? So we live in a society that thrives on this toxicity and that's the shit that continues to move. The same way, you know, people are attacking you about your resume of being infatuated with, you know, biracial relationships and biracials and mixed kids and all of this shit. But they're not covering the fact that you've brought us all of this amazing stuff, right? So we kind of live in a in an algorithm that rewards toxicity. 100%. Not even kind of. It 1,000% yeah. rewards toxicity. And so for the sake of capitalism, people continue to chase the shit that gets numbers. That's a better conversation to to for commercialism. You know what I'm saying? It's a better conversation to hear some negative shit right. than hearing people be on some positive shit. People right. be like, and I never forget that, uh, that moment in um, Venice when... The dude wanted to put in. He's like, hey, you know, I shit don't get no no play in my ride. You know what I'm saying? Like he was, on, and like it was as an LA nigga, I was like, I get that completely. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to, you want to just sometime ride out. You know, I feel like, but we are at a place now with social media, with podcasts, with you know what I'm saying, books slowly going away. You know what I'm saying? So crazy, like libraries are closed. Libraries are basically homeless lounges. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. I feel like people aren't reading. People aren't really, like, diving in. People are getting 30-second, 40-second TikTok lessons and going that half the time aren't researched and going to use them as real, you know, facts. I feel like we really do need to have more of the stuff that penetrates society in a big way. Y'all, movies. Oh, TV. you put us up there. One, this is, this is, we talked about this last time, and I never forget what you said. You were like, radio never goes away. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't realize that you were like, this never... I don't like... I thought about it. I'm like, oh, this is a format that people don't think about. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is a very lucrative format. Well, it's, I mean, you're doing, us, you're doing fine. Y'all yeah, niggas are doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, y'all are doing fine. It's, it's all relative. It's all relative. <laughs> nah, nah. Fine is well, not relative. And, but, and if we're being honest, <laughs> if we're being honest, what you're saying, uh, most of the advertising community doesn't realize how important we are to the local community, right? Like, the reason I love coming to work every day isn't to check. It's the fact that I know that nurses, firefighters, construction workers, parents, people just trying to figure out how to get from point A to point B. I got an 11-minute window. I want to smile. I want to get a piece of information. I want my kids maybe to hear a cool song and get a, I love, that's what I love about what we particularly get to do in morning. And how radio. long you've done it. And, and the reach. The fact that, yes. But then you'll get stuff like, um, I think after that, like, I, I didn't know this, like, 
I don't know. They were like saying you do something with the Apple playlist. Yeah, or something. yeah. I, I, I manage. Yeah, but like no, that. Yeah. Ebro's a monster executive at Apple. But sorry, like, I'll, I'll, but I'll, like I'll that. Settle down. Everybody. That sorry, gets sorry, sorry. that gets hated on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't you can't be successful. You can be successful, but not too successful. You can't do oh, this. And I feel like that's the point when I feel like we will employ we employ it on ourselves. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I feel like. I love Tyler. You know what I'm saying? I used to talk shit about Tyler, and then I started Tyler recently. the creator or Tyler, Tyler Perry? Perry. Okay. I started, Tyler Perry, too, but, like, Tyler Perry. <laughs> Tyler's, like, my, my mentor, my brother. I used to talk shit. Then I, I had a conversation. He super serves his base. And I remember my mom, and I, I walk in, and they're listening to watching those plays. on. You know, and I'm like, she enjoys this. My mom shows up to a Tyler Perry movie because she enjoys it. Mm -hmm. Her money is not less valuable than anyone else's money. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's different, there's enough lanes for us. But when Tyler gets too successful, then everybody wants to hate on him and say he's bad for this. Well, so the, 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 and we, we can wrap because we could do, the, uh, we'd love to have you back. And I know you got other things to do, but one of the toxic behaviors that many communities have, but it's real prevalent with amongst the black community, is what you're talking about. It is you get to a certain height and people begin to hate. Yeah. But what that is, is a dysfunctional way of fearing that someone's going to leave you. And so what we do is we fear that that black person that we or black, you know, store or black brand or black content creator is going to get so popular. They're not ours. That they're not ours. Michael anymore. Jordan's not ours. Right. Oprah Winfrey's not ours. But they are, though, at the but same time. But they are, time. but at the same time, you know what I'm saying? But like, that they, fear they is, is that, they're, so gone. Big, they that were... they're gone and they're not going to know that the community and the culture is still important. That's the fear because it's happened so many times. Yeah. So instead of us having the discussion and leaning in like, yo, no, I still got you. I'm here. I'm going to make sure I'm available and supportive and available to the community that I come from and that I need. Oftentimes, people get a lot of money. And they don't want to deal with the toxicity anymore. They don't want to deal with the drama. They don't want to deal with the problems. Now, now they're not part of us. Like, oh. Rock Nation, everybody loved Rock Nation. Everybody loved that Jay was doing it. And all of a sudden now they're the Illuminati and they're against this. And, they're, and I feel like it, that happens so often with us. It is, it makes you just want to quit. But no, remember, it, it but happened you got, to you. But, it happened, yeah. but, but you got to remember, Kenya, this is super important. Black people talk shit. They still love you. You're black. You 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 know what it is. Don't forget that. No, no. Just because we my... talk shit about you being infatuated with biracials yes. doesn't mean that we don't love you. Yes. Now, and you know that's a black. That's a I, and, I, and that's why I said I will keep doing what I do. That's right. And I will keep making stuff for us. You know what I'm saying keep doing things. And I, I don't. That's why I said I don't get bothered. My kids, my kids came into it. That's a different thing. Right. You can't fuck yeah. with my kids. You know what I'm saying. But I feel like other than that, like I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I think what you just said is a really important point. You get to a point, and it seems like you're not of us that's anymore. Right. And I think that that's a fear. And and remember how many times, what, how triggering and traumatic that must be for black folks who have who feel left behind. Yeah. Right? Like someone went on, they made their money, they from around the way. I used to know them, they live around the corner, now they act like they don't know us. Yeah. Now they don't come around no more. Yeah. Now they don't they they don't change the way they talk. Man, he even sit different. He crossed with his legs now, man. Look what he went. You know what I'm saying? Like that goes back. This isn't a new phenomenon. That is something that black folks have had to watch and experience over and over again is our leaders or our best leaving and never coming back to share any of what they learned or share any of the love or share anything. So we as individuals who get the opportunity to go see the world and go learn some things and go experience some things, we have an, in, in my opinion, some people may disagree, we have an obligation to share. 100, but that's what we're talking about. Like, and not be afraid that black people talk shit. That's all it is. It I agree. It ain't love. They just talking shit. I just agree. like at the barbershop, people just saying a bunch of shit, emoting, getting out that energy, you know, sharing. That's how we share, man. We just got to stop celebrating the bullshit. I was looking at the Tubi shit. It's was fun like, sometimes. It's though. fun, but it's like, <laughs> I, was looking, I was looking at the Tubi movies and I was like, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, and I feel like we were laughing at it, but I'm like, yo, this is bad for people who really want 
and have talent. I haven't seen the Tubi movie. We just, said we said the same thing about the Zeus Network and the whole yes, like that, that shit is, Blue Face and Krishan and like I'm like we're really celebrating domestic violence. This is horrible. Chris Brown horrible. was going to be the next Michael Jackson, right? He got into a domestic violent situation yeah. with with Rihanna. Done. You know what I'm saying for the most part. I feel like I'm. He should not. It's, you never hit a woman. You never touch a woman. But then, second, you know, ten years later, whatever years later, we're now loving, absolutely, facing Christian. I, I feel like, where's the where where's the line? Like, where's the where's the point where we sort of like, what is that? What do we really believe? What are we really saying? How do we really sort of? People love car crashes. Well, and, 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 <laughs> they, do. they do. Yo, they listen. Do. People love them. Yeah, they love accidents. They love. They love to watch. They love it. Yeah. That's why in the news cycle media, if it bleeds, it leads and all of that sort of stuff is because there is an infatuation with the chaos. Let's well, turn the infatuation. Ago, bro, that, that obsession with the talking shit on Twitter, it's such a cultural thing now. Like the cultural, the gang up, the Twitter gang up, ev it's every day. Every, every time day. I see a trend, I click the name and I go, who's who's catching it today? If we, But there is an opportunity to change that around. You know what I'm saying? Like there was that time Chuck D... You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like when it was like we fear of a nation, like we were we were celebrating what people were talking about. You know what I'm saying? We were mm -hmm. celebrating like people who really were dropping knowledge. Like why I think that that can come back. I really do. I really think that that can come back if you have So what happens is this. Um and and as somebody who's been in radio since 1990 and you'll see like you pointing out Chuck D or conscious you know thought things that are being celebrated for being intelligent and 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 progressive and forward thinking and uplifting individuals. Mm -hmm. But there was always a larger faction of noise and nonsense, right? But now with social media, the larger faction of noise and nonsense that didn't have a voice has a voice. Is the voice. Right? Yeah, it's a loud voice. Too. It's a super loud voice and it's an e it's accessible to all. It is very easy to be toxic and negative every single day. That is easier than working to be positive and uplifting and knowledgeable and 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 supportive and these other things we're talking about. Like if you just think about, you know how easy and quick you could, me, Laura, anybody could just turn and be negative because somebody didn't move fast enough from a red light. Yeah. Motherfucker, what yeah. the fuck is wrong? Yeah, and it's spazzing at a red light like it's in all of us, yeah. right? And so you have to really do work. And you know what most people don't want to do? Work hard at improving themselves. Most people ain't ready to do that work every day. Work hard at eating the right food. Work hard at getting enough sleep. Work hard at being better in your relationship. Work hard at, bruh, people are working hard to just keep the lights on. Yeah. You telling me I got to do more work? Yeah. Nah, fuck all that, bro. Turn the bullshit on and help me forget my problems. Right. Because I love seeing problems. You know why? Because I got problems and I want to see somebody with worse problems to but make me you, feel good if, about but myself. But there's a version of people like you, people like, you know, me some, at some points, people having, starting to change the conversation. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that actually takes... But we knock this conversation you're take ain't a hit going first. on the straight room, bro. This conversation ain't going on baller alert. This conversation ain't getting pushed around by iHeartMedia. But we this, need to make it. We, we need, if, if there's, if this becomes the conversation... You know how long me and Rosenberg been talking about blacks and Jews on this program and going at Israel and being honest about what's going on in Israel, talking about Palestinians, talking about Africa, talking about black folks reconnecting in the diaspora, talking about women's rights, talking about being great parents, dads, moms, talking contributing to society. Yo, you know how long we've been doing that on this program? It's not hot out here. It's not what's hot. And we <laughs> and we did it at a time where most program directors would be like, yo, make people laugh. Why are you up there uh, uh, holding court about the dynamics of the black and Jewish? That's not what's that's not gonna get you ratings. We did it against. And still got ratings, luckily, because we live in a market like New York where there are Jews and blacks that are living side by side and people who speak Spanish and understanding the difference between uh, uh, Dominicans understanding that they're black and Dominicans understanding that they still are the same as Haitians and not beefing with each other and how Jamaicans see each other in the black diaspora. We have that's because we're in New York. So we had that convo and it's been successful. So we're still here. But you take this out of New York and put this in another place in another city. 
that doesn't care about these dynamics. Most cities in America don't give a... F First of all, they don't even have Jewish people that live in it. They probably don't have black folks. They so they don't give a fuck. And that's why it goes back to me talking about, you know who really needs to fix the shit? The majority of the population, which is 60% white. Right. We can fix each other. Like, we yeah. can work on black dynamics and, and, you know, those things. But the greater issue of, of racism and, and capitalism and all of these things that divide us, that's got to be led by the majority of the population. But I think we need to, if we get the right people having the right conversations, you can change the conversation. I, I believe so. I do, I do think that. But, but it's got to be cultural and it has to be generational, right? Like it has to be practiced. It has to be, it has to be woven into the everyday system of how we, otherwise it's not going to become second nature. And you have to be, you got to get some people who are willing to take a financial hit. You know what well, I'm saying? Because that's what it's going to... And that's the... you know, I, I, That is very un-American, what Az you just Aziz said. Aziz had a joke in his special. <laughs> what you just said was very un-American. I know. So. Az Aziz had a joke in his special, and he said he saw Frank Ocean. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Frank, you know, like, how do you do it? Like, your life, like, you you feel like you just come out with an album when you want to and, you know, and do this. He's like, how do you live this life? And he said Frank was like, you just got to get comfortable with making less money. And Aziz was like, hmm... Interesting. I'm not sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm there yet. Interesting. That's money. Yo, the movie. The movie is you people. Uh, Kenya Barris. Thank you. Is Kenya Barris a, a friend of the show? I think I'm, he's. I think I'm a friend. He's I feel like it right now. <laughs> he's a friend of the show. This is For like sure. his third visit? Yes. Yeah. Back to back projects? Nah, Give it just, up, man. Kenya <laughs> Barris. Yo, a lot of people don't come by our show. Kenya Barris, we can count on it. We can count on it, man. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you, you for bro. your time. Thank you.